All right, so we've come to the edit menu, and that is accessed by, of course, going to the audio editor and then hitting the LFO button, and that takes you to the edit section of the audio editor. So basically what the edit section does is you can take a piece of your sample or all of it and perform various operations to it. Again, very similar to the ones you would find in a DAW. And you would be pretty surprised the kind of things you can achieve on the OctaTrack, which to me is amazing because that way you can just work with samples on your OctaTrack and not have to transfer them to your DAW um, and mess with them that way. So essentially either you'll be working with a piece of your sample or all of the sample. So again, to access the operations, hit yes. And so you can either select all, or if you're not gonna use all of the sample, you can go to the trim menu or the amp uh, menu, which is the slice menu, and you can select, make a selection that you already have, for example, a certain slice, which in this case, I'll just use one of these slices. Okay, so if you go if you have your slice selected there, go to the edit menu, then it automatically selects that slice for you. And you can see that it is selected there. So, and then of course, if you just want to do it manually, again, the way to do it is with the A and C encoders to select the start and end points. Back to our operations here, you have crop to selection. So all crop to selection does is it'll take away all the audio outside of the selection. So that's good if you want to create a, a, another sample out of a certain slice or anything like that. And also another thing I should have mentioned at the beginning is you have way more access to different edit operations if you're using a flex track. If you're using a static machine, a static track, you will have fewer operations. Um, so the next one, that one's pretty self-explanatory. Delete selection. This, of course, will delete whatever you select, but you can only use it at the beginning or at the end of a sample. So that's one of the stipulations for that. Okay, and then the next one is save selection as sample. So that one's pretty self-explanatory as well. You can take a piece of your sample there and save that part to be used on its own. Reverse selection. This one is interesting because it just reverses the part that you've selected. So you'll notice there that the sample is indeed reversed. But if you go back to the trim menu, you'll notice you'll notice that that selection is indeed reversed in the middle of the sample that you already have. So much like I mentioned last time, this stuff isn't saved yet. It's not permanent. So you would have to save this sample right here, the whole, and in this case, I have the whole thing selected. You would have to save that as a new sample in order to save that, uh, save it with that reversed part that I have there. If you happen to lose power or you turn off the OctaTrack or say you load another project without saving it, that will preserve the sample that you already have even though you've messed with it in the edit menu. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, that's what's so great about flex tracks versus static tracks is not only do you have more options, but it will preserve the original sample so that way you're not uh, making changes that you might not have wanted. Anyway, back to the edit menu. Go ahead and hit yes. 
So I have, right now I have the whole thing selected. I'm going to go back and select a different slice here. Okay, so now I have that selected. Okay, you can fade in selections or fade them out. This is a linear fade. Unfortunately, you can't change that. But, um, you know, it is definitely handy if you're encountering things like pops and clicks at the beginning. So if we fade in this selection, and then you go back to your whole sample here, It's not the most desirable thing if you fade in or out a slice, but like I said, if you have clicks and pops, what you're going to have to do is zoom in and select the part where the click and pop is, you know, which is usually at either at the beginning or the end, zoom in all the way, select that part, and then you can apply the fade to just that selection, which in this case would be a click or pop at the very beginning of the sample or the end of the sample. So again, you might ask yourself, why would you fade in or out a slice like that? You might not, you might, I'm not sure. That's up to you. But again, uh, a more practical way to use the fade in or out is for clicks and pops. And you would have to select that yourself manually. So, okay, back to edit. Fade in and fade out normalize so that's an interesting one you know i don't know about you but if you've ever say you've received samples from somebody or you've gotten samples from a sample pack or something like that you know you would hope that they're already normalized to a good volume but if they're not you can use this to do that for you now if you normalize the selection it, it raises the volume until the highest peak reaches zero db in most situations that would be a good thing there there are some situations i'm sure where you might need to think about it a little more but um you know ultimately in my experience i've had experience with getting samples from people or samples that i made myself that weren't loud enough and i was able to use normalize to bring them up to a much better volume that's definitely super handy. I've used that many times. Okay, now selection plus 3dB and selection minus 3dB. Now, as you can imagine, it's kind of like normalizing, but you, know, you have more control over it this way. So again, if you encounter a sample, or maybe, you know, maybe you have a really long sample, like for example, a... Uh, like you have a whole drum kit on a whole sample, much like on the OP1 or something like that. And say, you know, one of the hits is too quiet. You know, you could either do that manually by, you know, slicing up the kit like you normally would and then raising that, sam that selection alone. Or you could just do it right here from the whole sample the whole drum kit sample that you might be working with and just select that particular hit, that particular one shot and raise it up or down in volume. So, and then of course you can kind of use the waveforms, you can use the waveforms to even things out. See, if you look on this sample here, you can kind of see that the volumes are, you know, pretty consistent. So, I wouldn't have to worry about that with this sample, but uh, again, if you had certain one shots in a long string of drum samples, then you could use this to raise or lower the volume on those. Okay, so the next one is selection to silence. So as you can imagine, it will take whatever selection you choose and turn it silent. So I'm going to try, I'm going to turn up this selection here. Whoops. Well, that's okay. I just raised the volume of the whole sample there. 
So now let's go back and select one of these slices. And now turn that selection silent. Bam. So if you play it, of course you can hear nothing. So let's play the whole sample. Okay, well, this sample is getting quite mangled at this point. So moving on, you know, that's selection to silence. That would be great for if you're trying to trim the end of a sample or something like that. Um, you know, if, if you have some noise, you know, anything like that. And keep in mind, you know, you don't have to use just slices. You can select any part of the sample. So there's a ton of things you can do with that that are super useful. Okay, copy selection. Essentially what you can do with this is you can use this to copy a certain part of a sample and paste it onto itself in a different section. Or another cool thing you can do with this is you can copy from one flex sample to another. So that's probably the most useful thing about copying selection on the Octatrack is copying things between samples. So again, you know, you might not think these things are possible with a uh, groove box like the Octatrack. And I say that in quotes because obviously the Octatrack is quite a fully featured, I mean, there is no name for it, you know, other than a dynamic performance sampler. So, <laughs> but uh, I would say the most useful thing about that is copying samples to one another. I mean, you could essentially use that to, you know, create one big sample out of a few different little samples. So that's just one use for that. And then of course, paste is how you would copy things to another position or to another flex sample. So copy and paste would be used in conjunction with one another. So, okay, duplicate selection. There's two of those and you'll notice that they have arrows on either of them. So the first one duplicate selection to the right. What that does is it copies the selection and it pastes it right at the end of that selection. So let's try that. Let's make sure I have the correct slice right here. Okay, so I'm going to copy that slice onto the next slice. Duplicate selection, bam. Okay, so now if we go back and we play our sample. So you could essentially use that to create another sample or essentially rearrange your sample using the slices. So you could take one of the slices, copy it like I did, well, copy selection, and then, or duplicate selection. And then, you know, I could duplicate that. I could just keep going, and then that would create, that would make it so every single slice on here is the same as slice one. And then, of course, you could save that whole sample and now you have a sample made up of 16 slice ones. <laughs> so that's just an example of something you can do. But um, it's definitely really interesting how you can do that, you know, and one might argue that that's, it's almost just as easy as, you know, copy pasting on your DAW and just pasting one after the other like that. So the next one, is duplicate selection with the left arrow. So what that does is the same thing, except it copies the selection and pastes it right before the start of that selection. So if I take slice two here, which is essentially the same as slice one, so maybe I'll use slice three. Okay, so now I go back to edit and duplicate selection to the left Bam. Go back and listen to our sample. 
See, and the interesting thing about doing these things with the slices is that they essentially will stay in time because of the nature of slicing. You know, you're essentially taking a piece and moving it to where another piece, another equal length piece would be. And so that way it kind of preserves the timing. You know, another way to do this, to mess around with this, of course, would be to lay the trigs here and then create a slice grid and then create linear locks or random locks on these trigs down here. And then that way you could kind of figure out how you wanted to rearrange it. But keep in mind, if you do these copy selections, copy or duplicate or anything like that, it will actually change your slices. So that is one thing to keep in mind. So if you're messing around with the slices on here, keep in mind that any edits will mess with those slices. So, okay, next one. Change paste mode. This one is interesting. By default, if you paste something, copy and paste it, it will replace, of course, whatever you paste it onto, but it'll do it at the same volume. So it doesn't change the volume at all. However, if you change the paste mode, you can change it to minus six dB, which would essentially perform the same copy and paste operation, except it will reduce the volume whenever you paste it. So, you know, by default, rightly so, it should be on don't change the volume, but if you find that you have a few sections in your sample, a few selections that you want to reduce the volume, then you could just change this to paste minus 6 dB, and then that way you don't have to go to every selection that you're looking at and, you know, reduce the volume using the selection minus 3. You know, if you use, rather than do this, if you use selection minus 3 dB, then you would have to do that twice and, you know, a lot more steps than having to do it this way. So the other ones mix 0 dB and mix minus 6 dB. That will literally apply the selection to the other selection and it won't replace it. It will literally mix the two sounds together. So that is something... Um, you know, with very limited uses, of course, and uh, not everyone might find themselves using that, but still very so something that's very, very useful to have the option to do. So, so for example, if we do mix, I'm going to take one of these sample, one of these slices here, and I'm going to copy the selection. And I'm going to use the slice menu to choose another selection, the one right next to it, the, the slice right next to it. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to paste that selection right there. Bam. Okay, so now if we play it, So it was kind of hard to hear, but uh, there was a doubling of the kick drum there in one of the parts. I mean, essentially, you could take, I mean, we could just straight up take like half of this sample, copy it, go to the other half of the sample, and paste it. Okay, then now if we play this selection, you'll notice it's a little more, uh, the waveform is a little fuller. And at that point, you have effectively completely messed up your sample. <laughs> so that's just, I just wanted to show you guys what that actually sounded like. So, okay. So now, moving on. So paste mode, I'm gonna change that back to paste zero dB. But uh, just to give you guys an idea of what the mix sounds like, it's definitely really interesting. 
you know, and if, if you, again, if you pasted it on, on time, like, cause I just did a free selection using the encoders, but if you manage to select a few slices and then paste it onto some other slices, you know, you might get something pretty interesting there. Like for example, you could use this. Remember I mentioned you can copy one flex sample and then paste it onto another. So you could use that, the mix thing, to essentially put together two different samples. Like say you have a beat and a bass line and you know that for sure that they're the same BPM and everything, then you could essentially use that to combine them. So just one of many uses for something like that. Okay, rotate position to start. So this one is definitely interesting. It essentially rotates the audio so that the cursor position becomes the new start position. So this position right here would become the new start rather than where it is right now, which is over there. So let's try it out. Okay, rotating audio. Okay, so now if you look at it, it essentially rotated the selection we had there to the front and then it moved that to where, moved, moved the first part to where we were before. So let's check it out. So you'll notice that's the first half of the sample that we were working with, which is the part that's not as mangled as the other part which is the one that's completely messed up. So of course, in this case, I've taken, I've essentially cut the, the sample in half and I rotated the pieces. So again, I mean, that's, you know, it's, <laughs> that's something, I think that's a perfect example of something that you might not know you needed or you might not know that you could even do that, but you might find yourself using it more than once, you know? So that's definitely a really interesting one. Okay, moving on. Okay, mixed channels. So you have several interesting options with mixed channels. So the first one, add channel left and right, left plus right. So that essentially merges the left and right channels into, it's kind of weird to wrap your head around, but essentially what that does is very similar to if you're recording over here and you choose L plus R. Um, it essentially takes the left and the right, merges it into one, and then it copies that onto the left and the right. So if you think about it, what you end up with is mono. So yeah, that is definitely an interesting one. Um, if you find a use for that, let me know because I personally have not actually used that one. So, okay, subtract channel left minus right. That will essentially subtract the right channel from the left channel and then copy that onto both the left and the right. And then the next one, of course, is the complete opposite. It subtracts the right channel. Well, it subtracts the left channel from the right channel, and then it copies that onto both the left and the right channel. And then swap channel, that essentially, of course, swaps the left channel with the right channel. So it reverses that. So those are you know, very, I feel like those are very specific. Again, I personally haven't used those. Um, and if my sample wasn't in mono, I would try it right now. But if you guys mess with that, definitely let me know below. Okay, so now press no to back out of there. Go back to yes. And then you have invert channel. So essentially what that is, is flipping your phase. So you might not have known that the Octatrack can do that, but 
lo and behold, it does have a phase flip. If you find that uh, you recorded something, you know, and maybe you recorded something with, with some mics directly into your Octatrack or with a mix, you know, maybe you had a bunch of mics in a mixer and you sampled them into your Octatrack or something like that and you found that you had some phase issues, then you could use this to flip the phase on either both of the channels or just one individual channel. So definitely really interesting. I'm not going to go over phase in this video, but um, again, that would mostly only apply if you recorded something that was recorded with mics. So, okay. Calculate BPM from selection. So that'll essentially you know, assuming you, you have a sample that is perfectly, like in this case, this sample that I used here is recorded from my circuit tracks, which is down below here. And then I sampled that into the oct track using the track recorders here. If you're curious about that, I have other videos about that in my oct track playlist, but Essentially, I know for a fact that this sample is two pages long or two bars long, however you want to look at it. Well, 32 steps long or eight beats long, however you want to look at that. I know for a fact that it's perfectly recorded like that because of how I recorded it, how I sampled it into the Octatrack. If you needed to calculate the BPM, then you could use this to do that. And essentially what it does is it takes the BPM and applies it to the attributes menu here, which we'll go over next time. So, but um, yes, that will indeed calculate the actual BPM for you. So, okay, change preview mode. So you can use this to change how it previews the sample here when you press function and yes. So the interesting thing about this is all you can do is do play once or loop selection, but if you press Q and yes, then it'll only play, it'll only preview it through the headphones. So say, you know, and of course, Q is something you're most likely only going to use while you're performing live. So if you do happen to use Q, I would imagine that you'd want to change the preview mode to loop selection. So that way, whatever audio you're outputting live to the main speakers, for example, you could use your headphones to trim something in your headphones that wouldn't go out to the main speakers. That's definitely an interesting one. Again, you know, I feel like that one has some limited uses, but if you find that it's super useful to you, then let me know in the comments below. And then of course, change view is also in the other two menus. Um, and that just shows you how it'll be displayed on the screen, whether you want it to display just the left channel, just the right channel, or in stereo. So, but uh, by default, keep in mind that it just shows you just both channels automatically. So, combined into one. So, that's it for the edit menu. I know that was a bit of a longer one, but that's why I wanted to keep the edit menu to a video of its own because there are quite a few operations in there that are definitely really interesting and I wanted to give each one the time that it deserved so hope that helps you guys again if you have any questions leave them down below in the comment section and I will see you in the next video where we will go over the attributes and the files section